Shotzi, the model. That's Ryan Singleton, a young aspiring model. His story begins right here in Atlanta, where he was raised by his mom. Somewhere between third and fourth grade, he figured out that his initials of his name, RTS, backward was STR, which meant star. So he started then making himself into a star. In the fall of 2010, Ryan left Atlanta to pursue his dreams of modeling in New York. He landed seven shows during Mercedes Week in, in New York, and that's, that's huge. After success in New York, Ryan and his two friends, Antonio Faison and Jared Davis, set their sights on Hollywood. Their adventure was all caught on camera as they filmed their pursuit of fame for a docu-series called, Are We Famous Yet? The inspiration for our docu-series was simple. It was Ryan. We wanted to document his journey and become the model. Once they hit LA, things happened quickly. We were basically in the inner circle. You know, we were being invited to things that we kind of just saw on television and we're like, okay, now we're here. Then Ryan left LA, returned to New York, and suddenly was married. This is a photo of the ceremony. Next to Ryan is Real Housewife of Atlanta star, Cynthia Bailey. But that's not who he was marrying. I find out on social media, Ryan has gotten married to a man twice his age. I don't even know who this is. I don't have a clue as to what's going on. Ryan married Kyth Brewster, but the marriage didn't last, and Ryan returned home to Georgia in the spring of 2013, where things got more mysterious. He says, tell me the truth, okay? Something bad is gonna happen to me, isn't it? Then more mystery. He flew to LA, met someone, then rented a car, and drove himself to Las Vegas. Then before driving back, he called his mom. I said, boy, you okay out there? He said, yeah, I'm getting ready to come home. I said, okay, what do you need? He said, I need you to go in my room and get the $100 out of there. Ryan's mom wired the money to him. Then she received a phone call from Ryan's ex. I said, well, Ryan went to the West Coast and told me not to tell you. He said, oh my God, his life would be in danger. Brewster never told Ryan's mom what the danger was, but it was real. Ryan's car broke down in Death Valley on the ride back from Vegas. He flagged down the highway patrol, who dropped him off at this convenience store, and then Ryan vanished. 74 days later, his mom received another call, this one from investigators who found Ryan's body. He said, ma'am, Ryan didn't have any organs. He didn't have any eyes, he didn't have a heart, he didn't have any lungs, he didn't have any liver, and he didn't have any kidneys. I said, what? That's not like somebody took my son's organs and sold them on the black market. The autopsy report answers very few questions. The cause and manner of death, both undetermined. If you're looking for a causative element of death here, I think that it's an environmental death. Unforgiving conditions in the desert, 108 degrees, um, him walking, and all that spells disaster. <laughs> with his organ was not damaged by animals. Not a, a pointy-eared, tail-wagging, four-legged, furry animal. That was a human animal or animals that did this to my son. So since the story first aired last night on 11 Alive at 11, there has been an overwhelming reaction on social media for more. Then he went through the autopsy report, the evidence and the pictures from the scene with his investigators, Joseph Scott Morgan and Charles Middlestad. Together, they analyzed the case to figure out how it can be solved. Well, let's, let's, let's bottom line it now. Let's bottom line it. I mean, it's undetermined now. Do you believe that this thing can be solved, that there can be an answer for Ryan's mom from investigators in this case as to what happened to her son? From the scientific standpoint, I think that we've gone as far as the road can take us at this point. We've, we've examined, they have examined the remains. Not only has a forensic pathologist examined the remains, but also a forensic anthropologist has examined the remains. There was no sign of trauma. The only thing that they note as real trauma to Ryan's remains is a skull fracture. But both the forensic pathologist and the forensic anthropologist both state clearly that this is probably a post-mortem event that means after death, and that's as a result, that's as a result of the drying or desiccation that takes place in the bone. Bones became brittle. 
we're left high and dry. So I'd have to defer to good old fashioned shoe leather as far as the cops are concerned with this case. I mean, we, we have the expert telling us we're at the end of that road as far as the scientific side. So really what it leaves is you know, the, some possible testimonial evidence. Maybe there's some, a witness or two out there that saw him get picked up that saw him interact with somebody that may be able to shed some light on what happened after that California Highway Patrolman dropped him off there. To me, the likelihood that we get some clarity, some sort of resolution to this case, sadly, and, and I say sadly for the family, for, for Ryan's mom especially, it seems remote at, at best at this point. But if it were to occur, I think it's gonna be in the form of a, a witness that comes back. Now we're talking 2013, a lot of time has passed. The only way we may get an answer here is if there's more publicity about this case mm -hmm. and maybe someone remembers something or feels obligated to come forward. Right. I think right. that's the only way. I think yeah. that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we were talking earlier about how no 